January 22nd, 1966, Dubai has just made a big discovery that would change everything. I never thought I'd be having this discussion. Dubai. 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 How much I was treated as a slave. At the time, nobody knew that this event would set a chain reaction in motion, poisoning today's society. This was the moment Dubai began its unstoppable rise, seducing the world with its glittering facade while hiding a reality so harsh it might just be too much for us to handle. Dubai is a paradox that we can't seem to understand. And the best metaphor to describe the paradoxical relationship between Dubai and society is that of irresistible berries in the wild and the starving beggar. He continues to eat the berries even though he knows that they are poisoned. Maslow's hierarchy of needs is a psychological theory proposed by Abraham Maslow in 1943, which categorizes human needs into five tier models of hierarchical levels. Dubai has created a distorted view on what is important, which created a new pyramid with money, wealth and status first and everything else second. This has produced a perverted view on today's society of what it means to be happy. In 1892, the British enforced rules on Dubai that restricted their rights to conduct business internationally. By today's standards, Dubai was poor and relied heavily on the harvesting of pearls as their main source of income. That exclusive agreement became the greatest injustice Dubai had faced at the time, stripping leaders' rights to enter into relationships with any foreign government without British consent. Along with political control, these agreements allowed the British to force considerable influence over the economical activities in the region, including the pearling industry. But the introduction of Japanese cultured pearls represented a technological advancement that the pearling communities in Dubai could not compete with. Thanks to the British enforced rules, their isolation from the rest of the world led to a lack of technological advancement and infrastructure to either join the new methods of pearl production or quickly shift to other means to make money. The local economies were not diversified enough to absorb the shock when the impact of the Greatest Depression compounded the decline in pearl demand. And while the intention was to strengthen British superiority by suppressing Dubai, this abuse of power indirectly catalyzed the conditions necessary for Dubai to become a powerful global player. This represents the first of multiple paradoxes in this story. And with this we reach the turning point where Dubai's wrath began. A cute city selling pearls, once natural and authentic, was set out to become a paradoxical nightmare. And when we stopped buying their pearls, Dubai responded. Oh yeah? You no longer desire my pearls? Okay. Let's play your game. I will make you desire. What happens next is almost as if destiny wanted Dubai to become the mirror of the world to teach us a lesson. One year prior to the most significant event in 1966, it almost seems like the echo of what's about to happen to Dubai was foreshadowed by the world famous book Dune that was published one year earlier. Dune's story focuses on a desert planet whose economy revolves around a precious substance that they discovered in the sand. And underneath all that sand, in real life, Dubai found their precious substance. In 1966, Dubai found oil. This marked a starting point where Dubai treated their relationships with the rest of the world just like the British treated them. Using everybody and treating every relationship as transactional for economical power without any regards of any negative consequences. The first roadblock Dubai had to overcome was the fact that their oil reserves were never as abundant as those of some of their neighbors. This scarcity forced them to learn from their previous mistakes and diversify its economy beyond oil, earlier than others paving the way for investments in tourism, real estate, aviation and finance. This turned out to be the right chess move and Dubai was riding on the highway to global success. Dubai invested significantly in marketing itself 
as a luxury destination and a business hub. So they had to become bigger, better, and more luxurious than everybody else. This resulted in Dubai creating the most iconic monument the world has ever seen. The Burj Khalifa holds the record as the tallest building in the world. It stands at an unprecedented height of 828 meters or 2,716 feet and has over 160 stories, significantly taller than any other man-made structure. Part of Dubai's perception to the outside world are also the unrelatable lifestyles of sheikhs owning hundreds of luxurious cars, walking around with millings in cash and driving around with cheetahs as pets. And especially in today's times where bling bling and excess get the most amount of eyeballs, Dubai's relevance has only grown from here. But when you take a closer look, William Shakespeare's famous quote, not all that glitters is gold, rings truer than ever much I was treated as a slave and and so I decided not to come back to Dubai anymore. Dubai has one of the most oppressive laws you have ever heard of. It is illegal to talk negatively about Dubai and in worst case scenario you will land in prison. Have you ever wondered why so many YouTubers move to Dubai but have nothing bad to say about the place? That is the reason. Swearing on WhatsApp might cost you up to 10,000 dirhams which is equal to $2,500. Let's go one step further. If you send the wrong emoji privately to your best friend, like this one, you might face a fine up to 60,000 US dollar deportation or a prison sentence. Even driving around a dirty car might get you a fine up to $800. Dubai's motivation is to keep up the appearance that everything in this city is perfect, clean and luxurious. And when you stop caring what is right, you start going too far. Cloud seeding, if we don't know what it is, that's when uh, substances are dispersed into the air to cause rainfall. And Dubai have been doing that in recent years. It is quite telling that that one skewed authentic city now pumps chemicals in the atmosphere. First sign of nature fighting back have revealed themselves through intense floods that damage cars and disable airports. There also have been numerous reports of terrible working conditions for poor immigrants. Allegations including withholding their passports, non-payments or delayed payments of wages to apply pressure and gain control. And this poses the second big paradox. Dubai is treating their own people exactly how the British treated them. How ironic. Dubai became the number one symbol of wealth in the world. This led to social decay. The reason for that is a change in what we think is important in order to be happy. Everybody wants wealth. Therefore, success is now the top priority. You can see it in the rise of business gurus. Everybody wanting to be an entrepreneur. And I can even see it in my own behavior of putting success above all else. But if you thought that none of that is that bad, then let me show you how deep the rabbit hole really goes. Because a new disturbing phenomenon has appeared. Dubai's influence on societal values has distorted our view to such a degree that we have started to literally sell our soul. Hey, sugar baby. Are you a young, attractive woman struggling to make ends meet? Are you selling a fantasy? Is this real? Um, it is real. I'm living the life. If you browse through the internet, you find plenty of stories of girls getting invited to Dubai. And guess what enabled them to do it? Sugar dating websites are platforms where the rich and poor meet. Sites like Seeking Arrangement allow both parties to date, but the silent agreement is this. I give you money and you give me bedroom intimacy. The whole industry makes it look like it's about proper dating. While it is a transaction where only one party abuses their power by flashing money for the other party to perform favors. I don't judge anyone who uses this method. Prostitution existed throughout history. The problem is that these platforms are making it look different than it actually is. This results in many girls thinking they get a free trip to Dubai and some pocket money to then be trapped like a caged animal in a situation they did not fully grasp. This poses the third big paradox. We as a society want to be rich because we think that makes us happy, but then we sell our soul in order to get rich, which will definitely make us unhappy. And I'm not one bit better. I almost sold my soul this one time 
I had a potential client coming in. That client had a vaping company that basically sells vaping sticks to young children, you know. So and I was ready to do it, you know, just because of money. So it's just, it's scary. Uber's rise to a societal force of nature is proof that what goes around comes around. They experienced abuse of power, so they did the same to the world. This reminds me of the Greek myth of Tantalus. For his wrongdoings, he was punished to sit in a cursed pool of water underneath a tree with fruits. Whenever he attempted to catch a fruit, the branches would lift out of his reach and whenever he would try to drink from the water, the water would recede, leaving him in a perpetual state of thirst and hunger. And this poses the final and most mind-blowing paradox of this entire video. Dubai's rise to power began because the world no longer desired what they had to offer, their pearls. Pearls are a symbol of wealth and desire. And when the world rejected Dubai's pearls, Dubai became a symbol of wealth while the world got cursed with desire. <laughs> <laughs>